Good morning. I am Utaki Akbar, and I'm proud to serve as the president of the Tallahassee chapter of the NAACP. As you all know, the NAACP has fought hard for 112 years to serve its mission to secure the political, educational, social, and economic equality of rights in order to eliminate race-based discrimination and ensure the health and well-being of all persons. This annual breakfast is very important as we honor the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and while also celebrating the achievements of the students of our future leaders in the Leon County school system. As we have seen over the past few weeks, our nation is at a turning point. Some may say a boiling point. I prefer to use turning point because it is, it's a more positive perspective as it simply means we are heading in a new direction. We have seen a turning point many times before in our history. Many will say that the last major turning point was ushered in by Martin Luther King Jr. as he selflessly fought for desegre desegregation and advocated for basic civil rights for people of color. Although many strides have been made, what has become so glaringly clear is we have so much further to go. Students, as you excel academically, continue to ask yourself what you can do to make this world a better place. Just as the community has depended on the NAACP for over a century, we all depend on you, our youth, for the future of this community. Keep up the great work, stay positive, and remember, when we fight, we win. Thank you. Hello, I'm Superintendent of Schools Rocky Hanna. I would just like to welcome everyone to our annual MLK celebration. Uh, another year, I can't thank the leadership of the NAACP enough for making this happen. Uh, we're all living in different times now. A lot's happened since we were last together last January. And a lot of things that I know would be concerning to the great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. But I think we're making some positive steps moving forward into a new year, into 2021. And I just wanted to congratulate all of our dreamers and doers, all the young people who are going to be recognized on this program today. You know, Dr. King once said that uh, darkness cannot erase darkness, only light can. And hate cannot erase hate, only love can. So I would like to leave you with that. And then one last thought from, from Pope Francis. He said, rivers do not drink their own water. Trees do not eat their own fruit. Sun does not shine on itself. And flowers do not spread their fragrance for themselves. Living for others is a rule of life. We are all born to help each other, no matter how difficult it may be at times. Life is good when you are happy, but it is much better when others are happy because of you. So again, congratulations to all of our dreamers and doers. Thank you to the NAACP for making this happen. Uh, we're going to get through this together, and together we shall rise. God bless you, and congratulations. Elementary Schools Appalachie Elementary Principal Jennifer Ricardo Sanaya Birch and Chelsea Tipton Astoria Park Elementary Principal David Souls Jamari Idwa and Rodeus Murphy Bond Elementary Principal Delshana Jackson Danielle Peters and Tyron Smith Buck Lake Elementary Principal Billy Millard Kaylee Bugayang and Haley Whitmore Canopy Oaks Elementary Principal Stacy Mortham Jawad Abugas and Ansley Corrigan Chairs Elementary Principal Michelle Prescott Conley Elementary May Lee Chavez and Cyan Gambles. DeSoto Trail Elementary Principal Michelle Keltner, Ellison Jones and Journey Roberts. Fort Braden Elementary Principal Jimbo Jackson, Joshua Saavedra Guzman and Kyra Sweet. Gilcrest Elementary Principal Scotty Crow, Derek Scott and Barack Sneed. Hartsfield Elementary Principal Rhonda Blackwell Flanagan, Chalet Williams 
and Jaden Williams. Hawks Rise Elementary, Principal Beth Jackson, Samuel Carter and Lucy Liu. Killarn Lakes Elementary, Principal Brenda Wagner, Nora Page and Emma Roder. W.T. Moore Elementary, Principal Carrie Anderson, Safa Hampton and Brian Walker. Oak Ridge Elementary, Principal Jasmine Smith, Elijah Pompey, and Journey Williams. Pine View Elementary, Principal Carmen Connor, Jashante Moore, and Akira Norton. Riley Elementary, Principal April Knight, Carissa Duffy, and Kaylin White. Roberts Elementary, Principal Kim McFarlane, Braylon Johnson, and Michaela Toms. Rudiger Elementary, Principal Sally Stevens, Serena Martin, and Dumont Murray. Sable Palm Elementary, Principal Anicia Robinson, Anaya Henson, and K-Sun Rising. Sealy Elementary, Principal Demetria Clemens, Jada Green, and Amaya Wright. Springwood Elementary, Principal Sylvia Myers, Asaya Knight, and Rashad Rollins. Sullivan Elementary, Principal Michael Bryan, Taryn Samuel, and Nathan Tran. Woodville Elementary, Principal Dr. Lisa Murr, O'Leria Thompson Felix, and Yeslin Vasquez Ramirez. Middle Schools. Cobb Middle School, Principal Sarah Hembry, Tolulope Beniti, and Kamaya Penick. Deer Lake Middle School, Principal Stephen Mills, Madeline Porcelain, and Jillian Hochdwanger. Fairview Middle School, Principal Rusty Edwards, Talia Sutton, and Jalen Wiggins. Fort Braden Middle School, Heather Priest, and Cordell Sanders. Griffin Middle School, Principal Zelina O'Banner, Acacia George, and Ebony Petit Bois. Munford Middle School, Principal Louis Blessing, Nyla Imani Close, and Avery Douglas Harris. Nims Middle School, Principal Benny Bolden, Calvion Alexander, and LaShonda Morrissey. Raw Middle School, Principal Marcus Scott. Tyler McKenzie, and Tanner Owens. Swift Creek Middle School, Principal Sue Rochelle, Etta Lewis, and Brayden Richardson. We arrived in Tallahassee in 1982 when uh, Charles came to um, operate the computer system in um, School of Business and um, we were always very, very active in the NAACP. Um, in fact, we used to meet on Sundays for training at St. Joseph Church in Durham, North Carolina. And I had a chance, or we had a chance, to see Martin Luther King and all of the biggies. They would come uh, to our church. So as students, we got a chance to see them, you know, hands-on. When we came to Tallahassee, uh, Charles accepted the job as vice president of the NAACP. Anita Davis uh, was the president at the time. And their biggest challenge was to get single-member districts uh, in uh, the county. And as a result of that, uh, uh, Dr. Henry Lewis became the first uh, single member uh, 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 commissioner. Uh, and then, of course, Anita Davis followed in that suit, uh, in that seat. But uh, we also were involved with the school district very heavily. Um, we had a complaint against the school district because their 
were not enough minority uh, teachers and the good teachers and people were scheduled on the north side. Um, and of course Charles being the kind of person he was looked at the equity and so we met, talked with the school district and everything and were able to work out also equal pay. Uh, we were able to work it out and I'll say that during that time um, Superintendent uh, Bill Woolley was one of the first persons of uh, non-color to join the NAACP as a life member and he really really uh, uh, thought very highly of being a life member of the NAACP. The NAACP is the National Association for People of Color and that means all colors so he took that very very uh, very seriously. A lot of changes occurred uh, since we've been here uh, I'll say Charles was probably involved in the um, representation of minorities in the city, uh, government, county government, as well as in the school district. So we were in all phases. We uh, met with the uh, school district. Uh, we had a program, uh, Martin Luther King Breakfast Program, and our very first program that we had uh, Benjamin Crump and Daryl Parks were the speakers because we were looking at African American uh, men and boys as uh, uh, trying to find examples and mentors for them. Uh, the superintendent came to that program which was at the Civic Center and wanted to know if he could partner with us on that because what we did at the NAACP we asked each uh, school to send a representative uh, to the breakfast that they felt fashion or was most like uh, Martin Luther King and we paid for their breakfast. Well the next year uh, the school district came on board and uh, put structure to it for the school district and uh, we're full partners and uh, the program got bigger and bigger so we went from about a hundred to six hundred people and to get 600 people out for breakfast at uh, 7.30 in the morning is uh, not an easy feat. But we've been doing that probably about 35, 36 years. It's been a wonderful partnership. And to see the students and uh, their appreciation. So uh, that was a program, one of the first programs that we formed a uh, partnership with uh, Leon County Schools. It's really nice to just sit on my front porch and look over uh, at the pond. Also, uh, FAMU students have stopped by to say, oh, we named the park at the Dr. Evans. And uh, of course, they conjugated Cascade Park and just about everybody will conjugate or stop by uh, the old pond, they say, or the duck pond. But it's especially meaningful, especially because it was uh, where the slaves, this is a part of the Holton Plantation, uh, before being divided, where the slaves washed clothes over there. And I'm also told that it was the first city water reservoir. Um, there's a lot of history in that pond. And to have it named after Charles, he would not have wanted that. Uh, those of you that know him know he's very, very private. He would not have wanted that, but we wanted that for him. At this time, we'd like to introduce our speaker for the morning, Gwendolyn Marshall. She was elected Clerk of Court and Comptroller of Leon County on November 8, 2016, making Clerk Marshall the first woman in African American elected to serve in that capacity. Prior to running for office, Marshall worked 17 years for the Florida Association of Court Clerks and Comptrollers, advocating for and serving the independently elected 68 Clerks of Court and comptrollers for the state of Florida. She is a graduate of Florida State University where she received a Bachelor of Criminology degree and is a devoted public service. Without further ado, our speaker for the morning, the Honorable Gwendolyn Marshall. Good morning. First, I would like to thank former President Adner Marcellin, Pr President Mataki Akbar, Karita Evans, and the members of the Tallahassee branch of the NAACP for inspiring me to speak today. On behalf of the Leon County Clerk of the Circuit Court and Comptroller's Office, 
I would like to congratulate all students that are being recognized for their hard work and dedication. Today, we remember the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his contributions to fight against racial injustice and inequality, especially when it comes to the disparities we've been challenged with in our economy and our workforce. But as an African-American woman, I'm especially grateful for the progress that we have made locally towards the dream for gender equality. Dr. King spoke out for women who were denied equality. He marched with women who were underpaid and overworked. And I am here before you today as a result of his posture, standing on the shoulders of some strong and mighty women of Tallahassee, such as our former mayor, Dot M. and Johnson, tax collector, Doris Malloy, former city manager, Anita Favors, City Commissioner Diane Williams-Cox, the Honorable Barbara Hobbs, Second Judicial Circuit Judge, and the Honorable Nina Ashinafi Richardson, County Judge. These women came before me and paved the way so that I too could make a difference in my community. So I want to thank them for their service and sacrifice. In light of all the civil unrest our country is experiencing, our theme today, when we fight, we win, shows us first that we are yet living out the dream of Dr. King. Secondly, it encourages us not to quit because when we fight, we do win. One instance of such a fight was during the 1955 Montgomery bus boycott. Dr. King spoke to nearly 5,000 people at the Holt Street Baptist Church just four days after Miss Rosa Parks was arrested for refusing to relinquish her seat on a Montgomery city bus. He stated in his speech, and we are determined here in Montgomery to work and fight until justice runs down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. When we fight, we win. I would like to tell a story that the young at heart might know, but the young folks probably don't. On February 11th, 1990 in Tokyo, the undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champion, Mike Tyson lost by a knockout to the underdog Buster Douglas. To this day, it is still viewed as the biggest upset in boxing, if not all professional sports. When we fight, we win. Picture this, round one, both men came out swinging, full of stamina. It was a draw. Round three, same thing. Fast forward to round six, still a draw, but you can see the energy level starting to fall. Round eight, Mike Tyson is able to land a hard upper right hook and Buster Douglas goes down. The crowd goes wild. But he was able to get up in seven seconds. And three seconds later, you hear the bell ringing. Buster was saved by the bell. But let me explain to you the significance of what happened. No one had ever got knocked down by Mike Tyson and got back up. When we fight, we win. Round nine, Mike Tyson comes out like a hammer, trying, to bet, trying his best to seal the deal. By now, both men are totally exhausted and trying to do their best to stay on their feet. Round 10, Mike Tyson tried to land another uppercut, but Buster ducked and he missed. And in that moment, something changed in Buster. He started to fight back. His energy level started to increase. He threw a left, a right, and in one final punch to the head, Mike Tyson goes down and never got up. The underdog just defeated the world champion. When we fight, we win. Most fans 
were not aware of the circumstances leading up to the fight. In a later interview, someone asked Buster Douglas, how, what happened? Buster replied, before my mother died, she told the world that I was going to beat Mike Tyson. And two days before the fight, his mother died. He stated that he had to decide whether to die with his mother or he could wake up and live for his mom. When we fight, we win. When researching this, I saw where one commentator said that he knocked Mike Tyson out simply because his purpose was greater than that punch. His purpose was greater than his defeat. His purpose was greater than his trials and his tribulations. In a 2020 interview, Buster said that becoming the heavyweight world champion was his childhood dream, and it was his greatest accomplishment of his career. He said, imagine having to fight against all odds in a career where most people thought that you could do very little and only a few people thought you could do anything. But all the time you knew what you had inside of you and you know what it would take to achieve the ultimate goal. When we fight, we win. Some of you may have heard my story before. I started my career at the statewide clerk of courts association as a temporary receptionist. The executive director was impressed with my work ethic and he offered me a permanent position with the organization. For 17 years, I worked my way up the corporate ladder to the position of manager over the member services division. After 10 years in this position, I decided to ask my boss for a promotion. However, I did not get it. I had hit the glass ceiling. I was disappointed and too in that moment, I felt as if I had gotten knocked down. But when we fight, we win. Several weeks later, the previous clerk announced his retirement. Colleagues and friends began to ask whether I had considered running for the office. Just like some of you, others saw something great in me that I didn't see in myself. I was always in the background. Public speaking, just the thought terrified me. Similar to Buster, I sought out my mother and pastor for spiritual guidance. They asked me, what is your passion? At first I didn't understand until it was further explained that my passion would lead me to my purpose. When we fight, we win. Then I was advised to meet with the local attorney specializing in politics to discuss my chance of winning a race in Tallahassee. Simply put, he stated, I had no chance in hell. I was paralyzed, down for the count. He was the expert. How could he be wrong? But then a thought came to me. You will regret in five years when you look back and see where you didn't tr even try. What was I to do? When we fight, we win. So what I would say to you is that I get it when you say your parents want you to do this. Your teacher wants you to do that. Friends think you should do this and you don't know what to do. But let me encourage you today with one of MLK's famous quotes that says, take the first step in faith. You don't have to see the whole staircase. Just take the first step. February 1st, 2016, I filed to enter the race for the clerk of the circuit court and comptroller. On November 4th of 2016, I was elected to the office as the first woman and the first black to ever serve in this capacity in Leon County. I fought and I won. It was one of the hardest things that I ever had to do in my life. And I will tell you, the road was not easy. So my charge for you today 
is to find your purpose. If you have no purpose, you have no reason to improve your life. Your purpose will keep you fighting. In closing, let me leave you with the verse from Joshua 1, 9. God said, have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God bless you. Keep you from all danger seen and unseen. Thank you. And don't forget to enjoy the journey. High Schools Childs High School Principal Joseph Burgess Arsha Harris and Darren Holloman Godby High School Principal Desmond Cole Cornicia Brown and Nigel Brown Leon High School Principal Billy Epting Samuel Scriven and Kendall Williams Lincoln High School Principal Alan Birch, Tiana Curry, and David Monroe, Rickards High School, Principal Doug Cook, Philip Harvey, and Ariana Range, Sale, Principal Matt Roberson, Helena Connolly, and Isidro Palmer. Adult and Community Education Schools. Ace Dreamers and Doers. Principal Regina Browning, Lakeisha Baker, and Christine Johnson. Governor's Charter Dreamers and Doers. Principal Amy Reynolds, Amari Jones, and Shanye Mitchell. Gretchen Everhart. Principal Jana Bullen, Frederick Ricky Drake, and Jamal Ruhick. Heritage Trails Community School. Leon County Virtual School. Anastasia Smith and Sarah Toole. Pace Center for Girls. School of Arts and Sciences on Thomasville. Principal Aaron Lombardo, Mariah Huff, and Kennedy Palmer. School of Arts and Sciences at the Center. Principal Lindsay Merrick, John Bird, and Myla Parrott. Second Chan, Aaron Carter. Success Academy, Rictavius Bellamy and Jalian Jeter. Tallahassee School of Math and Science Principal Ahmet Tamel Rosita Avalos Jason Fayez Malaysia Jackson and Sofia De Leon Menendez I want to thank you for participating in this very important event. We look forward every year to not only commemorate Dr. Martin Luther King, but also to celebrate our students as we, as we have this morning. We look forward to working with you throughout the year to fight for basic equality, to fight for social justice, and to fight for economic equality. I want to thank our Vice President, Karita Evans, for helping to put this event together we had to be creative in what we did today and bringing it to you virtually. I want to thank Rocky Hanna of the Leon County School Board for always being willing to co-sponsor this event and to help us celebrate the students of the Leon County School System. We also want to thank our producer, Mega Ace Von Wilson, uh, for being creative also in helping us put this together for you all. We look forward to working with you and have a great day. Thank you.